Titus chapter 1 and verse 9 tells us something really important about preachers and, and what a preacher ought to do uh, if he's going to be a good uh, preacher of the Word of God. And this is what it says, "...holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught." that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You know, a preacher's opinions really don't matter. A preacher's eloquence really isn't that important. A, a, a preacher's creativity really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the thing that matters is that a preacher holds fast to the faithful word of God. To hold fast to something, I mean, to, to, to get a hold of the word of God and to say, this is the word of God. This is what people need to hear. This is the message that must go out. And that word of God is faithful. Listen, Jesus said not one jot or one tittle is going to pass from this word till all be fulfilled. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The Bible is faithful. You can trust the word of God. You can't trust very much in this world, but you can trust God's word. And so he says that the, the faithful preacher holds fast the faithful word as he hath been taught. I once heard a seminary professor say that a big portion of the preacher boys coming into their seminary had never actually read the Bible cover to cover for themselves. Now that just amazes me. I would have never presumed to preach this book unless I had read it to see what was inside of it. And so how important is it for us to teach the word of God to the next generation? And as the next generation hears the word, embraces the word, and then holds fast to it themselves and realizes that God is faithful. You've got to taste and see that the Lord is good. You've got to see the faithfulness of God for yourself in order to have the conviction to say, hey, this word, you can trust it, and to take that message out into the world. Well, that's what he says. He says, the faithful preacher is holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, by sound doctrine. If something is sound, it means it's healthy. It means it's good, it's right. A horse that's sound is one that's not crippled. And so he says, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Now that word exhort is parakaleo. It means to call near. It means to, it means to, to call people near and say, come, come here, come here. Let's look at the word of God. Let's see what the word of God has to say. It has to do with comforting. It has to do with encouragement. It has to do with a, with a teaching that, that, that's built upon edification. And he says, to exhort and to convince or bring conviction. The word of God is what convinces people of the truth, not our clever inventions, not our fancy schemes. It's the word of God that brings conviction and convinces of the truth. And so he says to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. The gainsayer is just the person who argues, the person who says, I don't believe that. I don't think that's right. I don't understand that. Well, you, you'll never talk somebody into becoming a believer. Becoming a believer is a miracle that God has to do. It's a miracle of the new birth that the Spirit of God brings into a person's life. But when you and I share the Word of God, the faithful Word of God, it brings sound doctrine. That sound doctrine is able to exhort <clears throat> and to convince. And so I just want to encourage you today, how important is it for us to get into the Word of God, to know the Word of God, to feed upon the Word of God, to share the Word of God? Our opinions really don't matter. At the end of the day, all of our learning and all of our fancy arguments are not going to get very much done, but I promise you something that will get something done. That's God's word. You can trust it. The Lord Jesus says, the wise man is the one who hears the word and does it. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.